my objective today is just to talk very quickly about what's changing. Can you really deliver better service for less money? I mean, that's the nirvana for everybody. That's what we all want to be able to do. We want to do better for less. Yeah, I'm going to talk about what's practical, and, um, and I'm also going to talk about what the expectations are in terms of staff, in terms of tenants, in terms of your suppliers, in terms of parliament, in terms of government, and the way in which that's all going to probably plan for you over, over the coming period. And a key point that I want to make about all of those people I've spoken about is in terms of my world, in terms of the science of managing contact, they're all your customers. They've all got something invested in what you do. And it's vitally important that you don't think that your contact with your suppliers is in some way different to the way in which you deal with your tenants. I hope to be able to prove that to you as a result of today's presentation. So, well, everybody, the pace of change has never been so fast and its impact will revolutionize all the relationships you have over the next three years. Has anybody ever heard anything like that said before prior to today? I know I have. Back in 1975, when I was a lad, uh, someone told me that 55 words a minute telex would produce the paperless office, and we've always been in this revolution since I started in the industry. And the weird thing was, I typed that, and you know what I felt? I felt like that. Okay, I felt bored. And I don't know, you know, put your hands up if you think expressions like that, you know, have been around for a very long time. Can I see a show of hands? Anyone who's heard this before? Good. I, I need to get you guys motivated because I know this is the last thing of the day. So, uh, what I thought was, well, hang on, I'm going to think of that case. But actually, where's the science behind that? So I'm going to take you on a little journey now through the science and through what's really going on. And hopefully, uh, you'll be able to draw your conclusions. And I hope you get some takeaways from, from my work today that will be useful to you. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was market conditions. And, and um, there's an awful lot of stuff out there in the market. I have to say, a lot of it is, is you know, quite tersely written and not much fun about the way in which conditions are going to change. But there's no doubt that there is some serious concerns at the moment about the way in which the industry is structured and the way in which things are going to pan out over the next few years. And in addition to that, there's no doubt that the regulatory environment is going to change. I'm not sure that anyone really knows what the new regulatory environment is going to look like. But I think that most people would say it's a sensible bet to say that this stuff is changing now. But that's not the only stuff that's changing. One of the big, scary elephants in the room right now is how are housing associations, how is social housing going to be funded? You know, anybody here feel that the housing industry has become more financially aware and focused in the last couple of years? Just a show of hands. Yeah. It, it's coming. Becoming more responsive to the challenges of funding is one of, the, it, 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 one of the things that's going on. And there's another thing. Our focus on clients, our, our relationship with tenants. Are they tenants? Are they customers? Who the hell are these people? Yeah, why are they tweeting about us? Why are they using social media? All of this stuff is changing the environment significantly. And I thought, well, well done, KPMG. Unusual for you guys, I, you know, to, to, to be so concise and very good. And I read through this stuff and I thought, hang on, there's something missing. Buildings changing. Not just the supply chain, not just the materials, but everything about it is changing. And for organizations who have a commitment to deliver new housing, that's not an insignificant factor either. So I find it true to say that conditions in the market are changing at the moment. Now I want to talk about a bit of technology. Who here is involved in, in delivery of technology, just so I know? OK, most of you. So uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, if, I, if I say something you don't understand, then do let me know. Yeah. So, uh, 
One of the most traditional technologies has been the use of IVR, and, and, and IVR is that thing that you use to say, I want to talk to so-and-so, and it's the tall steering piece. And the reality is that for most organizations, not just in housing, but, but in general, people spend an average in, uh, in, in the UK of around 2 minutes 15, according to some industry stats that I sort of expect, uh, going through IVR processes before they get to talk to an agent. Yeah, so, in addition to that, uh, in consumer research we did last year and the year before, we found IVL was the number one pet hate of consumers. So, what I conclude from that is we pretty much use it as much as we can, but we don't necessarily do a good job of it. But it's a mature technology, not a lot of change there except for making it better. Speech recognition is one of the new kids on the block, and that's where I say my you know, my card number, I, I, I say what I want, and then they asked me eight times if I wanted to go and see a film in Warrington. Uh, it's getting there, but it's not quite there, there yet. We did some research last year, and very interestingly, what we found was that consumers were made more nervous by speech recognition than anything else. Interesting, huh? Speech biometrics. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is where you're actually using the uh, the voice of the customer to actually identify them and to take them through the identification process. This stuff has legs, it's coming, and it's being driven by the fact that, that uh, uh, IDMV takes between 45 seconds and one and a half minutes, and if you could shave that up with every phone call, then you're saving yourself some real money and some real headcount. Yeah, it's also an improved customer experience as well. Outbound permission-based phone call. Now, we're coming, to, we're coming to a time when the idea that I can go online and I can say, actually, what I want to talk about is this, I want to talk about it at 6 o'clock, phone me, actually works not just for the consumer, but works for the organization. And the reason it works for the organization is it's much easier to resource a contact cycle, be it via telephone or directly, through an appointment-based system. So this stuff is going to become much more commonplace over the next couple of years. Voice-based collaboration. So now I can't fix your door, but let me get on to the guy who'd be coming along. Peter, can you join the conversation now? Hello, this is Peter. Yes, I could be there on Monday. Do you have everything you need, Peter? Okay, Mr. Customer. Okay, Mr. Tenant, we're there. Yeah, Peter's going to be along. That kind of voice-based collaboration is just a byproduct of the infrastructure that people are putting in place now. It's not going to cost you much more to do that. It's only about using the technology that you've got in a slightly different way. So if I'm honest, in terms of voice services, I also find that in channel terms, there's quite a lot going on that's going to change. If I look at the web, I'm just going to put these up, okay? Uh, more and more processes, more and more services are available, uh, are available for delivery by the web. I, I was talking to some of the suppliers here uh, to find out what, what housing uh, uh, meant to them. And an awful lot of them now deliver, now deliver web-based front ends. And the great thing about those web-based front ends is you can also flip those web-based front ends and make them customer-facing web-based front ends. And so what I find is that the, the opportunity to drive more services out into an automated fashion uh, is a true trend that we're seeing increasing at the moment. Yeah? The web is getting better. We're now on the 12th or 13th generation of, of, of web code. The original web code was really slow and clunky. I'm sad that I, I remember it, I miss it. But we're talking about new generations of stuff that's pretty robust, works very well, and, uh, and, and goes down seldom, seldom provided you've got uh, good infrastructure, of course. Uh, the bad news is that web now includes mobile and smartphones, and that means HTML5 and some of these other things that you won't good news is you won't be investing in Flash for much longer. It's a changing world, but what I do find is that the delivery of web content to all devices 
is a key driver at the moment. And out there in the world, there's an awful lot of organizations doing it. And then the final piece that I find to be true is the piece around social media. And there's really a couple of pieces that are important. So the first is co-authoring, and this is where you encourage your tenants, you encourage your partners, you encourage the people who are within your community, whatever that means, to actually write how to do things. You want to know how to fill in an H24 9BF? Yeah, there's a guy who's made a video on it, about it on YouTube, go find it. Yeah? And that guy will be hugely flattered that someone's actually looked at his video. There's a huge amount of, uh, 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 of untapped knowledge that you can get people to provide to the rest of your tenants, to the rest of your customers, that will cut down on avoidable content. And that trend is increasing, whether you like it or not, you're being spoken about on the social media, and unfortunately, you can't be slightly social. You either are or you're not. You either close your ears or else you're gonna hear it. But being engaged in that, being, uh, being involved in that, means that it's much easier and much cheaper to disseminate news. You can stick it on a Facebook page. Now, I don't think that's appropriate for the kind of uh, organizations that you are, but that stuff is very cheap to do now and becoming cheaper. The other thing is that what social media does allow you to do is to fine tune your social agenda. Because social media actually allows people to express their emotions. And because it allows them to express their, their emotions, it's very easy for you to step back and say, you know what, that's a heartfelt story. That resonates with us, and actually it resonated with 28,000 of our customers. We ought to do something about that. That's a great way to feed into your social agenda and to help build the way, the, the way you operate your model. So, the other big thing that's really got stuff going on for right now is mobile phone. Okay, how many people here have a smartphone? Raise your hands. You'd think smartphones rule the world. Okay. But what do you drive on the smartphone? Well, I have a, far too many apps on mine. I can do anything from, you know, find a Starbucks in, in the Arctic to, uh, to calculate the latest exchange rate. Uh, but in terms of tenant services, there's no doubt you can pretty much do today anything you can do via the web. And the result of that is that payments, appointments, reporting, travel, and training can all be driven to some extent to these devices. There are things like security as well. Yeah. In terms of staff, you can understand where they are, you can understand what they're doing, you can provide them with some kind of protection. Yeah, if they're going into uh, uncomfortable situations. In addition to that, you can also understand where your partners are. Yeah, we pay whatever company to go and fix doors, and um, look at the GPS, he's actually four miles away from where he's supposed to be. This stuff is all going to integrate together to make a change over the next few years through common and standard components, and that's where we're going at the moment. Yeah. So finally, Oh, not finally, sorry. In terms, of, uh, in terms of systems, we know it's all Moore's law. It's getting better, stronger, faster, more powerful. Yeah? Um, presence is a huge thing in terms of your ability to reduce costs. If you're able to get your customers to say when they are present and able to, to receive you, and if you're able to get your staff to collaborate through presence technology, your cost model starts to change dramatically. It's really important that you understand the role of the presence in terms of the cost of you. Um, measurement, well, one of, the, one of the, the, the truisms at the moment is that we're going to have much more data. And if you've got much more data, then you've the opportunity to understand more. But whether or not more data means more insight is, is, is perhaps something I'm going to leave you to ponder for today. There's new stuff coming along. Uh, near field communication. Anyone familiar with near field communication? Raise your hands. Okay, so this stuff is about being able to be within a, a, a couple of feet of something and uh, for it to recognize a, a, a new kind of chip in your mobile and smartphone. And what that does in terms of the consumer relationship, uh, we're only at the doorknob 
in the States and in Japan, they're doing some remarkable things, including having personalized adverts come up. Okay, well, I thought about that, and I'm going to spend just a moment on that. And if you were supplying smartphones to some of your disadvantaged teams and it had a, a nipple communication with it, a message might come up as I walk across here that says, Johnny, don't go down that road. <laughs> There's stuff you can do with this stuff that is just remarkable. So I find that in terms of systems, there's an awful lot of stuff coming on at the moment. In terms of the overall change agenda in, in, in behavior, well, I think we're going to see some very different expectations. Uh, it's already changing now. Uh, people expect you to be as good as Tesco's. They'll expect you to have bumps, uh, you know, uh, they'll expect you to have uh, scan services uh, very, very soon, whereby they can ask questions through a scanner. Uh, you're going to need to be able to spot Omnichannel. Uh, Omnichannel is really this piece that if I start with a phone call, and I go to the website, and then you send me an SMS, I want that to be seamless. I want a single experience, doesn't matter what channel I'm on. And that's one of the commercial drivers for most big retailers today and for most financial services. So you're gonna have to meet that challenge as it comes on. And in terms of data, what I've already said, the big thing is, more data doesn't mean more insight. But here's the other big thing that I wanted to talk about in relation to this. More decisions at the point of contact. One of the truisms of the last few years is that you know, we are system driven. Yeah? I can't make a decision, I can't do anything, and yet the human element has gone out of my decision making. The common sense has gone out of my decision making. Well, when I'm able to sit there and actually feed into the complete decision making machine, then my ability to make decisions should increase with that opportunity. And the other thing is, you're probably going to want it to do so. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a little more in a second. All right, so here's the fantastic news, right? Smarter services, smarter devices, going to be absolutely marvelous. It's all going to be so much easier. Bad news, the gap between those smarter services and the, those who are disenfranchised is huge. Yeah. And there'll be different levels of this. Users generally, you know, general <laughs> users, they'll be educationally challenged, they'll be the elderly, they'll be the vulnerable. And the truth here is really, the more you drive those services to being smart, the bigger the gap is for them, right at the back. And so one of the key drivers for, for most organizations over the next couple of years is how do I drive that stuff into the hands of my staff, into their smartphones, into their PDAs, into their tablets, in order to help those people with all these services that, that we're, we're excluding them from. So uh, that's where we are. And so what, what, what I find is that in terms of channels, behavior, systems, expectations, conditions, uh, what is it, a, virtu a, a virtuous circle or a vicious one? Actually, it's more like a world war. I'm going to explain why very briefly. Mathematically, the bottom line for me then becomes all of these things are converging. They're all converging in the space of experience, and they're all converging in the, in the space of delivery. And as a result, it is true to say that these are extremely fast moving times. But it's happening quickly. It's getting more complicated, and you will be measured in this new financially aware model of the world that uh, you're facing with government eyeing you up as a potential target for more income and revenue by how you adapt to that change. Yep, there's going to be great opportunities, and yes, there's going to be some really big threats, but actually, there's nothing you can do about that. It's a, bit like standing, it's a bit like standing there on the edge of that whirlpool and thinking, actually, it's not fair that that thing's targeting me. Yeah, swim or you're in trouble. So I'm just going to talk quickly about some of the key things over the future. Yeah? Number one, there's never going to be a more important time to understand your target operating model. 
unless you are able to articulate what you want to be as an organization, you're nowhere in terms of your ability to adapt in this rapidly changing environment. You need to be able to articulate what kind of organization you're going to be. In some of the reading that I did, there were some really confusing figures. So on the one hand, seemingly an awful lot of uh, 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 housing organizations are going to contract and concentrate on their core services. And on the other hand, seemingly an awful lot of, uh, of, of these organizations are going to expand their services to take on a much bigger social remit. I'm a cynic. I suspect that some organizations will contract down to core, some will take a bigger social remit, and each organization will view that challenge differently. But that's, this is where you articulate it, the target operating model. And if you don't have a target operating model, then how do you know where you are in your journey today? So the second piece that I'm going to recommend to you very strongly that you have is you really need to start thinking about this whole piece around omni-channel customer journeys. So most people are used to these, you know, these kind of flat customer journeys that say he walks into, uh, he walks into the help center, he does this, he does that. Those are already out of date. People have spent five to seven years building them and they're already out of date. You need an omni-channel model that says he's going to send me a text to arrange an appointment, to ask for a call, to get a visit, to do this, to do that. And you're going, to be, you're going to need to be able to react to this stuff. And the omni-channel model, uh, the omni-channel customer journey is the way in which you're going to be able to, 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 to articulate that effectively. Yeah? And what that should lead you to, once you understand where you're going, and once you understand uh, uh, what, your, uh, what your delivery uh, uh, looks like, then you can start to say, these are the things on our roadmap, and these are the things that we need to do today. This is the low-hanging fruit. This is the piece we're going to do around infrastructure. And this is the stuff that we're going to do that makes a difference. Yeah. For instance, if you could drive half your contact to being outbound, you could probably reduce your contact center by a huge amount. Now, is that appropriate? That's the question that the other two pieces there answer. So, <clears throat> I believe that most organizations within this sector will be different in three years. As I said before, some will contract, some will change, some will take a much larger social remit. But I'd be very surprised if most of them are the same. I believe that the key piece that's going to change in terms of the relationship with the tenant is this ability to actually de de deliver decision making to empowered staff. So here's the thing. Right now, no one's got any decision making authority and they've all got to refer back to somebody else and they've all got to do that. But give them an iPad, okay, give them good processes, and actually what you could do is empower your staff. And then all you've got to do is to give them the confidence so they can make decisions. I once had the honor to serve in a, a really large telco, and we were changing completely what we did. And I needed everybody to make their own decisions. And after three months, what I proved to myself was that no one was going to, because they were frightened. So we had to, win it. We had to do a huge hearts and minds program in order to win people over to actually taking some risk. So it's not just about the technology, this stuff. If you want to drive down decisions to the point of contact, yeah, then what you need to do is you're going to need to do the culture piece. In terms of that culture piece, without a doubt, technology is going to play a huge role. Technology influences so much of our lives today that we really need to actually get control of the way in which it helps us. We're going to see a huge amount of change in behavior. In the last five years, you know, we have seen uh, radicalization. I remember in the mid-80s when I used to carry one of these big things, I used to be an operational manager, 
big, big mobile telephone. It rang once when I was at a Who concert. Every time it ever rang. Yeah, and I was one of the few people who had this thing. And I walked around like this. Yeah, now if my daughter's phone isn't working, I'm in trouble. It's not my fault, but I'm in trouble. This stuff is all changing dramatically now. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, and if anybody's got any questions,